Hi, I'm Rusty Komori, and this is Beyond the Lines. We are broadcasting live at the Pioneer Plaza in the beautiful Think Tech Hawaii TV studio in downtown Honolulu. This show is based on my book, also titled Beyond the Lines, and it's about leadership, creating a superior culture of excellence, and building winning teams. My special guest today is a fantastic example of all of this. He is the winningest college volleyball coach in U.S. history and the legendary longtime head coach of our University of Hawaii women's volleyball team. He is Coach Dave Shoji, and today we are going beyond volleyball. Coach Dave. <laughs> Thank you, Rusty. That was quite an introduction. <laughs> well, I have to say, Coach Dave, that you've been an inspiration to me for a long, long time. I mean, long time. So I'm so thrilled to have you on the well, show today. Well, thanks for having me on. I'm happy to be here. Now, I want to ask we you. We go way back. Oh, no. Are you going to mention that? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> okay. Um, I want to ask you about your background, where you grew up at. I grew up in Hawaii. I wasn't born here because you uh, asked me that. Uh, I was yeah. born in California and moved here when uh, my dad moved here to teach at the University of Hawaii when I was three. So I grew up here, but I had to go back to high school on the mainland because of cir circumstances. Okay. And then went to Santa Barbara, UC Santa Barbara, and then moved back here after that. Now, what sports did you end up playing uh, before getting into volleyball? Well, when I was a kid, I played all the sports. I played football, basketball, baseball, whatever there was I was playing. Whatever season it was, we played. So okay. I, I've got a pretty wide variety background in sports. And then when you went to Santa Barbara, you went there on a baseball scholarship? I did. Wow. I went there on a baseball scholarship. After one year, I decided... I wasn't going to make the varsity. I wasn't going to be a real impact player. I wasn't very strong. I didn't have a great arm. So basically, I gave it up and just was a student for a few years. Jeez. And so when did you start volleyball? I started fooling around with volleyball because my roommate played a little bit. And we would go to the beach and we would play some games on the weekend. And then I took a volleyball class. And then... The actual instructor was Dennis Berg, who is still today my close friend. And wow. He's got a couple famous daughters, too. Oh, yeah. But, um, anyway, he asked me to come out for the team. He said, hey, just come out, try out, see how you do. I think you can do well. And I did. And then I guess the rest is history. Gee, so you played college volleyball, like, for three years then. I did. I played uh, my third year in school, fourth yeah. year, and fifth year. And I see. Yeah, it wasn't like it is now. It was really a kind of a cult sport, I would yeah. say. We had some really amazing characters on our team. <laughs> but, and we didn't train very seriously, but we, we loved the sport. You yeah. know, we loved the game, and we would play every chance we got. Nice. Yeah. And then your family, you have an amazing family, Coach Dave. You're, I, know you're, I know your wife, Mary, uh, Kavika, Eric, Kobe. Eric is my state doubles champion for the our Punhole Boys varsity tennis team. Um, what are they all doing now? Well, Kobe's married. Okay. Um, she played volleyball in college. Yep. Uh, she went to the University of Michigan, but she's married to a football coach now, which has been very exciting for her. And she's got two kids, and so we have two grandchildren. Nice. With her, uh, her husband coaches at the University of Southern, I'm sorry, I couldn't say that, uh, South Carolina. Oh, yeah. Um, the Gamecocks. Gamecocks, very exciting. We've been really involved in watching their games. And then Kavik, our oldest son, he's in Poland now. He's been a pro volleyball player, Olympic player for eight years now. And, uh, and Eric, our other son, is in Russia playing professional volleyball in Russia right now. And if people don't know, your two sons are USA Olympians, bronze medalists. Yeah, they are. How do, must be the genes, huh? <laughs> well, I don't think it's the genes because <clears throat> I'm not particularly athletic. I mean, they're, they're not the most athletic two kids. And uh, to make the Olympic team, there was a lot of luck involved. But basically, they knew a lot about volleyball. They grew up in the gym. They grew up at our practices. And so it was just natural. They were rounded all the time. And I think that had a lot to do with them making the Olympic team because certainly physically, they, they weren't the most gifted players. So the mindset, I mean, they're just, the internal climate, I mean, they're just awesome with that. Well, you know, we talk about volleyball IQ, and they certainly have volleyball IQ just yeah. based on being in the gym, watching every single match of ours at, from when they were 
three, four, yeah. five. <laughs> you know, they were in the gym watching games. So I think that's why they're such good volleyball players. So, Coach Dave, when did you start coaching? I started after I graduated from UCSB, and I did a little stint in the Army, came home looking for something to do, and um, started at Kalani High School. Wow. Coaching the varsity in 1972. Okay. <laughs> wow. Yeah. And then what, you also became an assistant coach at Punahou School as well? I was taking some side kind of coaching jobs, and ended up at Punahou, coaching JV, volleyball, JV, basketball. Jeez. And so that was the same time I was doing kind of Kalani, and so it all kind of started back in the early 70s. Yeah, and then so how did the UH volleyball situation evolve? They had a team in 1974. Alan Kang was the coach, and um, it played strictly a club kind of schedule. It wasn't a very big thing. They started to have scholarships, but Alan couldn't do it the second year. They asked me to do it. In fact, Chris McLaughlin and his wife, Beth, were involved in the yeah. team, and I was kind of hanging around, and <laughs> um, they asked me to do it, you know, temporarily, and so I said yes, and, you know, the rest is kind of history. Temporarily. Yeah. <laughs> now, were you also a coach of the men's volleyball team, or were you always the coach for the women's? No, I did the men from 1978, I think, to 82, four years, and... I was doing both the men and women, and that was really exciting. And got the program started, and you know today they could win a national championship this year. Yeah, well, oh, that's amazing. I never knew that that you coached the men as well during those four yeah. years. So, Coach Dave, you coached. You were the head coach for forty-two years. You won four national championships. Why are you successful? <laughs> why was I successful? Why um, Why are you successful? A lot of it was. I guess luck. A lot of it was luck. Everything kind of fell into place for us. We were always pretty close, 75, 76, 77. We were always top three. And at the time, it was kind of a West Coast sport. Yeah. We had to beat Long Beach and UCLA and USC, but it wasn't the sport it is today, but it was quite competitive. And people ask me about that, but we always... Well, the main thing was that we recruited one superstar from the mainland, and that was Diane Sebastian in 1977, and so she was our, our big star. I think you have to have a superstar to win the national championship. And then Phil around her with good local players. Yeah. Uh, we had great local players, Angie Andrade, Diana McInerney were some of them, and oh, yeah. Cheryl Grimm was on the team in the 1979. That was kind of the key. And back then, we were basically a defensive team. You know, Hawaiian kids running around, digging balls, and keeping the ball alive. And we had better ball control than anybody else. Same thing, 82 and 83. We had Dietrich Collins. Oh, yeah. She was the superstar, filled in with really good volleyball players around her. And, um, 87, when we won, Suzanne Agee was the big star. And Tito Huna and Mahina Elaneki, local kids, filled around them. So that was kind of the key to our championships. So, Coach Dave, what is your team culture of excellence? I mean, every CEO, every head coach, they have a culture of excellence that they try to implement. What was yours? Well, back then it was, uh, and pretty much throughout my career, it's all about technique. You know, how to pass and how to set and how to block. And, and uh, most of our practices were just technique. We would go 20 minute blocks kind of thing where you work on just blocking. You know, no six on six. It was just, you know, footwork, technique. And so I think that that's where our players got better. Uh, technically, I think they were better than most of the teams that we played. Uh, a lot of teams were better maybe physically, but we, I thought we were better technically. So we would, uh, I think 60% of our practices were just technique. Um, sure, we had the ball ball, but there was no six on six kind of thing and I think that's where I was good at. I was a good teacher. I, I felt that was what I liked to do. I, I liked to break it down and, and our players got better by, by doing that. Yeah, so the fundamentals, the foundations physically was just rock solid. Well, I think it got to be rock solid. And you could see players develop over the years like a Suzanne Agee and all of our players got better because they just worked on technique all the time. Yeah. And, uh, at the end, 
you know, they were very good volleyball players. So how much of the mental part did you focus on? I mean, the mindset, the, the internal climate, when did that all, how did you do well, that? Well, it came to the forefront a little later in, in my career. Um, you know, we, we started to incorporate, you know, a team psychology doctor kind of thing. Yeah. We bring in people. In fact, Chris McLaughlin, uh, who you knew very well, worked with our team. We had other people work with the team on the mental aspect of the game. Uh, they were experts at it. I, I wasn't an expert at it, so I did my own kind of thing, but I left it up to the you know, people that had more education in that respect. So yeah. that became very, very critical at the end because, uh, as you know, working with women, it, it, was, it was difficult because they had to balance all these kinds of things in their life with not only school but just personal life and then, you know, have a big obligation sure. with me in, in the volleyball area. So that was a big hurdle, and I think we, we did very well in that area. So, Coach, as a coach, as a leader, what is your leadership style? It changed, Rusty. It really? changed over the years. I mean, early, I think I was, you know, take a lap kind of coach. You know, you messed up, take a lap. And, <laughs> and the kids, they didn't know any better. They didn't, you know, respond negatively. They would just do it, you know, and, and that changed. And that changed over the years where uh, you had to be more of an encourager and a more of, um, you know, come on, let's, we can do this. And uh, rather than... Uh, demean somebody and that, that just doesn't work to, in this day and age as you know um so i've had to i did i would say change with the times and i was more nurturing at the end and robin i'm old who i coached earlier in her career yeah. so i got soft you got soft <laughs> babe. And that's not the case so i mean uh inside I, I was still tough but uh and i wanted our players tough but it was just a different way to approach things well, the greatest coaches, the greatest CEOs, I mean, they, they have vision, they can adjust, they can adapt, and that's exactly what you did. And coach, I wanna ask you, how did you get your players to rise to the occasion, to have that peak performance level consistently? That's a tough question, Rusty. Um, I think in just overall, if your team is prepared physically and yep. they know that they're uh, capable of winning matches, and uh, I think that's the start. You know, if, you, if you didn't have the talent and you, you weren't up to par physically with the other teams, then you're probably not going to win. But I think our teams were. I think they felt they were prepared physically, technically, mentally. And so our, I think our players always thought they were going to win. Yeah. I don't think there's any doubt. That they had no doubt they were going to win or, or win the majority of the games. And I think that's maybe answers your question. But yeah, and yeah. you know what? And, and watching your games, I mean, you were a master of strategy and tactics and really handling the environment as well. I mean, that was very impressive. I want to ask you, Coach, what is something that irritated you as a coach? <laughs> <laughs> uh, I think irrit what irritated me was not following the game plan and just kind of going off on your own. Well. The other five people are doing one thing, and then one player decides, well, I'm just going to do something else. I think, I think I'm, I'm going to hit cross court rather than hit line because that's just what I want to do. Yeah, yeah. That, that would kind of irritate me because we <laughs> talk about our strategy, our game plan. And, and getting back to the other thing that you mentioned about me, but I think my involvement in sports in general, I played baseball, I played basketball, oh. football, really helped me in volleyball because volleyball – you know, a lot of people can know about volleyball, but just to kind of see something that was going on on the court maybe wasn't necessarily related to volleyball. I think I had a really knack for, you know, when to substitute or this person's not doing well, but because of my overall background in sports. Yeah. yeah. Oh, you're just a great coach. <laughs> a lot of good coaches. Out there. Coach Dave, we're going to take a quick break, and when we come back, we're going to continue going beyond volleyball. Great. You are watching Beyond the Lines on Think Tech Hawaii with my special guest, Coach Dave Shoji. We will be back in a quick minute. Hey, Stan the Energy Man here on Think Tech Hawaii. And they won't let me do political commentary, so I'm stuck doing energy stuff. But I really like energy stuff, so I'm going to keep on doing it. So join me every Friday on Stan the Energy Man at lunchtime, at noon, on my lunch hour, 
We're going to talk about everything energy, especially if it begins with the word hydrogen. We're going to definitely be talking about it. We'll talk about how we can make Hawaii cleaner, how we can make the world a better place, just basically save the planet. Even Miss America can't even talk about stuff like that anymore. We got it nailed down here. So we'll see you on Friday at noon with Stan the Energy Man. Aloha. Aloha. I'm Yukari Kunisue, the host of Konnichiwa Hawaii, Japanese talk show on ThinkTech Hawaii. Konnichiwa Hawaii is all Japanese broadcast show and is streamed live on ThinkTech at 2 p.m. every other Monday. Thank you so much for watching our show. We look forward to seeing you then. I'm Yukari Kunisue. Mahalo. Welcome back to Beyond the Lines on ThinkTech Hawaii. My special guest today is the winningest college volleyball coach in U.S. history and the legendary longtime head coach of our University of Hawaii women's volleyball team. He is the one and only Coach Dave Shoji, and today we are going beyond volleyball. Coach Dave, through the years, what would you do as a coach to keep improving yourself? There are a lot of ways to do that. I think watching a lot of volleyball. Now, nowadays, I watch a lot of men's volleyball because my sons are playing overseas, and so I would watch a lot of games, and you know, if you're a young coach, Watch as many college games as you can, maybe some professional games, just to see what the trends are, what people are doing, the game's evolving all the time. So I would try to stay up. Um, some people live in the past, and then this way is the only way. And, um, but the game's evolving. Every game's evolving. Um, look at basketball. I mean, three-point shots prominent now, where yeah. back then, you know, you had to work it in, and centers are big, but now it's the guard. Anyway... I, w I would look at a lot of games. Um, you know, the other ways to do it are go to clinics, uh, learn from the best guys, look, look at where Russ Rose is speaking and maybe at a convention or something and, and try to pick their brains if you ever get a chance to you know, talk to somebody. But <clears throat> I, w I would just watch games and see what trends are. Knowledge is power for sure. Yeah. In my book, Beyond the Lines, Coach Dave, I talk about welcoming adversity and looking forward to challenges. How would you do that with your team to get them in the right mindset to look forward to these challenges? Well, I think you can always look at a loss. That's what we used to do. I mean, we take a loss, and that's where your uh, weak points are brought out by the other team. And so uh, even though you hate to see you lose on tape, and, but I think that's the best way to go back and see what happened, why you lost, what they exploited on you, and then get better at it, you know, because the next guy is going to watch a film and say, hey, they aren't really strong in this area, and then they'll exploit that. So that's what we used to do is just, hey, we lost. Let's find out the reason. Let's go back, look at it, go back into the practice gym, work on those kind of skills. Maybe uh, the next time out will be better. Yeah, you learn, definitely learn a lot more through, you know, losses and you know, when I coached your son, Eric, I mean, he, he rarely lost. <laughs> He's a tough doubles player. Well, he had a good partner in Alex <laughs> Ching, that's for sure. Alex Ching and Eric, they were, they were pretty yeah. dominant. That was fun to watch those guys. Yeah. And, it, you know, the other thing that I should mention is that I love the dual sport or triple sport athlete. You know, Alex played golf, golf and tennis, and Eric played golf, uh, tennis and volleyball. But yep. I think t nowadays the kids are too... Uh, one kind of sport, uh, they get a lot of burnout, yeah? You yeah. see burnout in kids now because uh, it's just too much. And they yeah. started when they're 10, and they, they only play one sport, and their muscles get broken down, they get hurt. Uh, Alex and Eric were multi-sport athletes. I think that's really good. Kavika played three sports. My other son yeah. played basketball and uh, golf and, and uh, volleyball. So uh, I really believe that Alex and, and Eric drew on those other kinds of sports to win in tennis. No, I totally yeah. agree. Totally agree. Coach, what's, what's an important lesson you've learned in your life so far? I've learned that nothing comes easy, you know, in the, in the world of athletics. There, there's no shortcuts. If you take a shortcut, someone else is working harder than you, you're going to get beat. So I would say 
I, I just know that you, you can't cheat on any drill. You can't take, if you had to do 10 reps in the weight room and you do eight, and you're not going to be the best person you can be. So I think that's the one thing that I have learned over the years in athletics anyway. Now, you're so right because so many players, so many coaches, they're doing so much in terms of hard work. And it's just whoever does more tend to have that little advantage. Well, a lot of people are natural athletes, and they get by on that. Sometimes they think they they can get by, but like I said, if you get two equal people and in athletic ability, and one's working harder in the weight room and training yeah. and and um, just living a better lifestyle, that person's going to win. Yeah, Coach Dave, what's been your greatest obstacle? that you faced in your life that you have to overcome in my life in your life trying to marry my wife <laughs> <laughs> what happened there <laughs> i didn't want to get rejected but <laughs> you know i've been really fortunate i haven't had uh, many obstacles i mean trying to win games is an obstacle but you know looking back i mean you won a lot of games so what you know kind of thing uh, some relationships that you you form that are more important. So I, I've been really fortunate. I, I, somebody said that hey, you didn't work a day in your life. <laughs> and I kind of agree with that. <laughs> well, you worked a ton. <laughs> yeah, and we won, and you know we try to win every year. But uh, and those are obstacles. And recruiting is an obstacle. Um, things at UH were always obstacles in our way, but. There's nothing major, Rusty. Okay, now I want to pick your brain about this. What do you feel the best leaders do? I think the best leaders, uh, you know, they take charge. They're not afraid to ask questions. They're not afraid to go out on a limb. Uh, they might get criticized, but uh, you can't lead if you're afraid of something. Uh, you can't lead if you're not going to speak up. Um, I think the coaches that are strong people and they, they won't take no for an answer in some cases are the best kind of leaders. Yeah, and the, the greatest leaders, they're never complacent. They're always, you know, taking calculated risks. What are, what are your thoughts about risk? Well, I think you have to take risks. Uh, you know, the one thing I can look back, we, we had a player, Nikki Taylor, who... 6'4", and had a great arm, and she could hit. And uh, At the time, the trend in, in women's volleyball was to take that big person because she, she didn't play great defense because she's so big and she didn't move well, but that, that wasn't the case with Nikki. We let her play back row, and then we let, started setting her in the back row. No one was doing this. The men were doing it, but none of the women because uh, they always had these back row specialists, and let's get a better faster kid in there and take the big kid out and but we left her in and it became something that was a weapon for us we started setting her in the back row she played pretty good defense for someone who's 64 and and so that was a risk that we took as a coaching staff and uh, you know we we almost made a final four with that oh yeah particular system and oh, yeah. no one else was doing that coach dave who was a coach that impacted you the most well dennis berg was my my first coach yeah and uh dennis berg uh has a daughter named lindsey berg who played oh, in the yeah. olympics and you're gonna have her on pretty soon yeah. and and so he was my inspiration he was my my pe teacher at santa barbara and said you need to come out try out for this team and um so he was my first college coach uh in volleyball so what did he do that was so good well he was a fundamental kind of guy and we worked a lot on skills, and so I think that's what influenced me most that, uh, later in my coaching career, which was five or ten years later. But uh, he was one of those guys that just we worked on skills, and I, that's how I became a good volleyball player, decent volleyball player, because I, I would work on this and this and this yeah, and yeah. this. Um, but he was my first coach, and to this day, he's one of my best friends. Jeez. So... You're so loved by so many people in Hawaii, and you're retired now for two years? Been two seasons. Two yeah. seasons. Yeah. So what are you doing right now in your retired life? I knew you were going to ask that. <laughs> <laughs> uh, 
I golf and I surf and I travel. Oh, and that's just about it. And uh, I do. I have a honeydew list in the afternoons and work around the yard and sometimes work on the house and things like that. But basically, I'm not doing much uh, other than having fun. So, what's something that you want to do in your life that you just haven't done yet? Um. There's different parts of the world I'd like to visit. Like um, where? Well, New Zealand is first and foremost. I think my wife and I both, would, that's our, maybe our next trip. Okay. But we're still following the boys. We're still, uh, you know, Eric's playing in Russia, and I'd like to go to Russia. Mary's been to Russia. But, wow. Uh, so we're, we're, we're still traveling. Uh, you know, the secret desire for 2020 or 2020 is yeah. the Olympics. Uh, whether Eric or Kavika could make the team again. We're definitely going to be in Tokyo, so. So they're going to they're going to they try for it. Oh yeah, they'll be uh, on the U.S. national team this summer, and they'll just see how things go. It's, it's a tough business because you got to keep beating out the next guy. Yeah, yeah. Coach Dave, in my book, I talk about a part where there's assistant coaches that become head coaches, or assistant managers, and they become general managers, and they fail. Why, why does that happen? I'm not quite sure. Uh, I just talked to Mike Seeley, who was my assistant coach several years ago. He's the head coach at UCLA. I just talked to him this morning, yeah. as a matter of fact. And uh, he still calls me boss, even though he's won a national championship. <laughs> but I think people fail because they, they kind of go off in tangents. They, I've had coaches that uh, have coached for me maybe 10 years, uh, they go on and they completely change what they've been used to in the last 10 years. I don't know why. They, now they're a head coach and maybe I got to do this. I think maybe they should maybe go back and see what was successful for not only me, but other coaches and, and go from there. But a lot of people, when they get that head job, well, yeah. I'm going to do this, man. I've been waiting to do this and this is be awesome but maybe it's not something that's tried and uh maybe it's not tested maybe yeah. so i don't know maybe no maybe you're right reason I, th I think so that's good now before we wrap up coach dave i want to ask you one more thing um what ad what one piece of advice would you give to younger coaches right now i would say take care of the details um a lot of young coaches uh, want to be in the gym, and that you know, obviously, that's that's where the passion is in the gym, coaching, dealing with players. But there's so much more to being a head coach and um, administratively, you, you got to take care of that stuff, the details, because that's what's going to bring you down eventually if you if you're not successful. Um, you know, coach on the court, on the field, everybody can do that kind of thing. But the really good coaches. They work well with the media, with the training room, with the administration, with the facilities. Those kinds of things are yeah. really, really important. Coach Dave, I love the insights, and you're so right about the details, and that's why you are the legend. <laughs> Stop it, Rusty. I appreciate you for being on Beyond the Line. You're Lines a legend today. at the Fun Old Tennis. Hey, 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 hey. <laughs> thank you, Coach Dave. Oh, you're welcome. Thanks for having me. And thank you for watching Beyond the Lines on Think Tech Hawaii and a special thank you to my clothing sponsor, Iolani Incorporated. For more information, please visit my website, RustyKomori.com, and my book is available on Amazon, Barnes & Noble, and all Costco stores in Hawaii. I hope that Coach Dave and I will inspire you to create your own superior culture of excellence and to find your greatness and help others find theirs. Aloha.